Hey y'all, how y'all doing? This is your girl Tashi and I'm back with another video. How you doing? How you feeling? So we're gonna react to an American tourist sailed to North Sentinel and it ended badly. What? Let's get straight to it. On the 15th of November 2018, John Allen Chow took a boat to North Sentinel Island expecting a peaceful welcome. He never made it back home. Although before we talk about- Okay, before we continue, I think I heard about this. I'm not sure if it's the same story, but I think a guy went to an island and he was not welcome there. I think I remember this one. I'm thinking it might be the same one. I'm not who sure. Who he was, what he was doing, and how he came to meet his fate. Let's first talk about the island itself. Okay. Located in the Bay of Bengal between India and Thailand, North Sentinel Island measures six kilometers wide, eight kilometers long, and is home to one of the last uncontacted tribes on all of planet Earth. The tribe is known to outsiders as the Sentinelese, who have an estimated one. population of between 50. Yeah, I think I think it's the same one. I've heard about this. I heard about this, but I don't remember the whole details and 500 people. However, there's a reason why taking an accurate measurement is almost impossible. Well, They're unbelievably hostile here? to Didn't anybody who tries them? to visit the island. The first example of this came in 1867 when an Indian merchant ship wrecked on the island's reef. And while the 106 passengers might have thought that they'd stumbled upon paradise, this couldn't have been further from the truth. Without warning, the ship's crew were attacked by the tribe's bow and arrows and were only able to survive by returning fire with sticks and stones found on the beach. They were rescued by a British steamboat one week later, yet the captain of the shipwreck went on to describe the Sentinelese by writing, the savages were perfectly naked with short hair and red painted noses and were opening their mouth and making sounds like part on off. Their arrows appeared to be tipped with iron. Mm. The intriguing nature of the tribe led a party of armed British officials to return 13 years later in 1880, at which point they'd find, quote, a network of pathways and several small villages that looked to have been freshly abandoned. They'd eventually find four Sentinelese children, as well as an elderly couple, who were kidnapped by the party and taken back to the nearby city of Port Blair. However, their stay didn't last very long as all six Sentinelese sickened rapidly and the old man and his wife died, so the four children went to their home with quantities of presents. 16 years after this, a Hindu convict escaped on a makeshift raft from the adjacent Great Andaman Island, only to wash up 50 kilometers west in the worst place imaginable, North Sentinel. A search party found his body lying on the beach pierced Ooh. with iron arrows, with his death sending a clear enough message for nobody to return to the island for almost 80 years. However, in 1974, a film crew shooting a documentary called Man in Search of Man landed on the island to leave gifts. We came at last to what is known as the North Sentinel Island. Although some expeditions had landed here, the Sentinelese had never been sighted. We left gifts of coconuts, knives, lengths of cloth, a pig. After which the Sentinelese were caught on camera for the very first time. What are those moving shapes? Are they human? I would love to see how they look up close. I never really seen any video or any pictures of like how they like up close. Not no drawing or anything like that. Like I want to see like at last the first glimpse of the Sentinelese. I can't see. It's dark. This tribe believes in total isolation. It will not tolerate a stranger. As is obvious in the footage, the tribe had no interest in making friends and rather buried half of the gifts they'd been given before shooting arrows toward the film crew. A member of our film unit was wounded by one of the many arrows. Each two and a half. Is he dancing? He will carry this scar till his death. If on Google Maps you zoom into the coastline on the island's northwest corner, you'll find a different boat which now acts as a permanent reminder of North Sentinel's hostility and unrecoverability. The ship going by the name of the NV Primrose had been transporting farming supplies to Australia before it wrecked on the unfortunate location in 1981. The ship's passengers were incredibly lucky because at the time, this entire area was underwater, keeping them at a safe distance while they organized their rescue. In the meantime, the Sentinelese observed the ship from their beach, with the crew members describing the tribe as well-built, frizzy-haired and black. They were naked except for narrow belts that circled their waists, and they were holding spears, bows, and arrows, which they had begun waving in a manner that seemed not altogether friendly. However, while almost every example so far displays the Sentinelese as an untouchable group of brutes, it would be exactly 10 years later when a single anthropologist did the impossible. He made peaceful contact for the very first time. T and Pandit had been dropping gifts and coconuts to the island every one or two months since 1967, although for the first 24 years of doing so, the Sentinelese maintained their hostility. But all of this changed on the 4th of January 1991, when the tribe finally concluded Concluded that he was only there to help. Panda described this day in a 2000 interview with the American Scholar, which stated a great. I mean, I don't feel. I mean, I'm not condoning like them hurting people, but they probably just don't want people on the island. There's no wrong with that. Like they don't want strangers on the island. I don't. And in, and in a way, I don't blame them. In a way, like no, don't come here. Go someplace else. Like this world. Look at the world we live in. Any anyway. way, if I had, if I was living in a private island, I don't want nobody to come there. And, like no, don't come and try to like take over or try to change like no don't just stay where you at do you know thank you for the food though <laughs> thank you for the gifts and stuff but don't 
No, just keep going. Many of the Sentinelese started running down the beach and splashing through the surf toward the dinghy. The director leapt from the boat into chest high water. One of the young Sentinelese men recalled in fright and handed coconuts to the tribesmen as they crowded around him. A few weeks later, he returned to North Sentinel with another expedition. This time, several Sentinelese men went so far as to climb into the dinghy and grab entire sacks of coconuts. Panda was alone in the water with a group of Sentinelese. One of the young tribesmen looked at him, scowled, pulled out an iron bladed knife, and made a gesture, Panda says, like he was going to cut out my heart. Maybe he thought I was planning to stay on the island. But the dinghy quickly returned to pick Pandit up. He would return to North Sentinel several more times before retiring from the Anthropological Survey in 1992. The interaction showed that peaceful contact with the tribe was possible, although only after a significant period of trust building, and even after T and Pandit's unique interaction, the Sentinel- I wanna know, well, I mean, the, I mean, he already mentioned that it's like 300, like, wait, is it 300? 300, right? 300, there's only 300 people on that island. They probably, I don't blame them. They probably like, don't come here. Don't come to this island. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Sentinelese retain their hostility them. toward but, any I mean, I don't condone outsider. the violence. For example, after the 2004 people. Indian Ocean earthquake caused the worst tsunami in recorded human history right next to North Sentinel Island, a helicopter was sent out to see if the tribe had survived from such a catastrophic event. Well, not only were the Sentinelese somehow doing just fine, but their response to the help offered by the Indian government was to throw spears, arrows, and rocks toward the helicopter. Two years later in 2006, two men aged 48 and 52 were fishing for mud crabs near the island. However, the pair got so drunk that while sleeping, the anchor of the boat, which was a rock tied to a rope, fell apart and drifted the men toward North Sentinel. The following morning, fellow fishermen said they'd try to shout at the men and warn them that they were in danger. However, they did not respond. They were probably drunk, and the boat drifted into the shallows where they were attacked and killed. Oh. A government helicopter was sent to recover the bodies. However, given the tribe's hostility, all they were able to get was this photo, after which a 5.6 kilometer exclusion zone was enforced by the Indian government, making it illegal for anybody to visit the island. This, in combination with every other example so far, paints a very very simple picture. Do not visit North Sentinel Island under any circumstances. However, unfortunately, John Allen Chow never got the message. Born on the 18th- How he didn't get the message? He, he didn't have friends, he didn't do his research. Like, it's so important to do your research before you go to a, another country. I mean, I mean, really do your research. And no one warned him? of December oh, 1991 God. in the state of Alabama, John grew up in what seemed to be a standard Christian household with two parents and two siblings. As he got older, John began to get into various outdoor activities such as camping, hiking, and kayaking, which when combined with his religious background, inspired him to become an adventure blogger and Christian missionary. On his Instagram, John displayed his trips to countless different countries, including Mexico, South Africa, and Canada, each of which being documented on his Rugged Trail website. However, there was one location that John had his sights set on, which would make all the others seem insignificant, North Sentinel. He'd grown obsessed with the idea of visiting the island during his previous trip to the Andamans in 2016, and judging from the quotes he posted to his Facebook, John seemed to have been inspired by another missionary named Jim Elliott, who was killed in the 50s whilst preaching to a native tribe in Ecuador. Although, according to the head of the mission he was working for, John was significantly more prepared. All Chow's decisions, including his- How was he prepared? Like, obviously he wasn't prepared because he would have known. So someone say he was very well prepared for the moment. And he didn't want to endanger other people's lives. I understand that, but why would you take that risk? His studies of sports science and training and working as a wilderness emergency medical technician and classes he took in linguistics and cultural anthropology were in preparation to share Jesus with the North Sentinelese. He was very well prepared for this moment. Yeah, on the 21st of October, 2018, John posted this image to social media showing that he was back in the nearby city of Port Blair where unbeknownst- If you was prepared, you should have had a gun or something on you because uh, I don't know. That's scary. Thanks to his not, family, he was planning his trip to what he called Satan's last stronghold, aka North Sentinel Island. On the 15th of November 2018, only 25 days after landing back in the Andamans, John began a journal to document his trip to North Sentinel, with his first entry stating that a group of fishermen had agreed to take him to the island illegally. I met last night with the fishermen who were all believers and agreed to drop me off. Jonathan won't be accompanying me as they will be at sea doing their regular fishing maneuvers to avoid raising suspicion and there is a high chance that they'd get checked by the Indian Coast Guard. The meeting went well. I trust them though I'm the only English speaker so there's quite a language gap and I'm relying on the Holy Spirit to direct us. The drop zone was pointed out on the map as being a cove on the southwest of the island, and I depart in three or so hours. God, I thank you for choosing me before I was even formed in my mother's womb to be your messenger for your great news to the P North Sentinel Island. John then explained his plan for first contact by stating, the plan is to link up with the crew tonight and depart tonight, arriving at the shore around 4 a.m. From there, we make progressive contact with fish as gifts over the next few days and then send me off. We might even send a kayak laden with gifts towards shore. The following day, John explained that his trip- if you want to send gift people, you don't need to visit these people. We all, 
I'm American. And I already knew about the store about this long time ago because I heard about this years ago. That's one country I would never visit. You hear me? If you want to help someone, send a, send like a small little boat or some something we could put food in, clothes, whatever they need, and try to like send it off. You know, like send it off to them. But don't get close to those people. They don't want nobody there, all right? They, they don't want strangers in their island, and nothing wrong with that. Don't go there. There's other islands y'all could go to. Go There's so many. <laughs> there's so many places you could go, but that's one island you should not go. Do not go there, okay? I don't care. Don't go. The island went as planned by riding. At 4.30, we entered the cove on the western shore, which was followed by his first attempt at contact I would never. four hours later. Around 8.30, I got two large fish. Around 15 pounds, it felt like. I put them on top of the kayak and began rowing. Two armed sentinelese came rushing out, yelling at me. They had two arrows each unstrung until they got closer. I hollered, my name is John. I love you and Jesus loves you. Jesus Christ gave me the authority to come to you. I regret I began to panic slightly as I saw them string arrows in their bows. I picked up the half tuna and threw it toward them. They kept coming. I backpedaled facing them and then when they got the fish, I turned and paddled like I never have in my life back to the boat. I felt some fear, but mainly was disappointed they didn't accept me right away. I can now say I've been nearly shot by the Sentinelese and I've walked on in cash gear on their island. Now I'm resting on the boat and will try again later. John escaped his first encounter unharmed. However, as mentioned in the previous entry, he planned on returning for a second encounter, which miraculously he'd survive once again. I waited my kayak toward the hut I'd been chased from on initial contact. Sure enough, as I got there, I heard the whoops and shouts from the hut. I made sure to stay out of arrow range, but unfortunately that meant I was also out of good hearing range. So I got a little closer and as they, about six from what I could see, yelled at me, I tried to parrot their words back to them. They burst out laughing most of the time, so they probably were saying bad words or insulting me. I yelled some phrases and sang them some worship songs and hymns, and they would often fall silent after this. Here's when this nice meet and greet went south. A child and a young woman, both with bows, came behind, and I kept waving my hands to say no bows, but they didn't get the memo, I guess. Then a little kid with bow and arrow came down the middle, and I figured this was it. So I preached a bit to them starting in Genesis, and disembarked my kayak to show them that I too have two legs. But the little kid shot me with an arrow, directly into my Bible which I was holding in front of my chest. I stumbled back and I recall yelling at the kid for shooting me. I had to swim almost a mile back to the boat at the mouth of the cove. The plan now is to rest and sleep on the boat. By this point, Don already had an unbelievable story for the ages. He had gone to the island, survived his first day, returned on a second day, was shot by the Sentinelese point blank but lived to tell the tale after the pages in his Just bible decided them. to spare his life That's however as the journal them. entries continued it became obvious that john was happy for his legacy to be the guy who died trying to preach his religion to the tribe lord let your will be done if you want me to get actually shot or even killed with an arrow then so be it i think i could be more useful alive though but to you god i give all the glory of whatever okay. happens i don't want to die would it be wiser to leave and let someone else continue no i don't think so i still could make it back to the u.s okay. somehow as it almost seems like certain death to stay here yet there is evidence so basically he took that chance so he is, is what it's like he knew you know that's what i'm getting from this he kind of knew he's like uh, you know if it happens it happens so all right I mean. of changing just two encounters in a single day. We'll try again tomorrow. The following day, John wrote his final entry in the journal, beginning with, Woke up after a fairly restless sleep. Heading to Ireland now. I hope this isn't my last notes, but if it is, to God be the glory, before going on to write a goodbye message to his family, reading, Brian and Marilyn and mum and dad. You guys might think I'm crazy in all of this, but I think it's worth it to declare Jesus to these people. Please not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. Rather, please live your lives in obedience to whatever okay. he calls you to, so and you I'll do. see you again when you pass through the veil. Don't all retreat right. my body. I love you all, and I pray that none of you love anything in this world more than Jesus Christ. Written from the cove on the southwest-ish, more like west of North Sentinel Island. 16th of November, 2018, 6.20 a.m. In the days that followed, his family made a post to John's Instagram reading, we recently learned from an unconfirmed report that John Allen Chow was reported killed in India while reaching out to members of the Sentinelese tribe in the Andaman Islands. Words cannot express the sadness we have experienced about this report. He was a beloved son, brother, uncle, and best friend to us. To others, he was a Christian missionary, a wilderness EMT, an international soccer coach, and a mountaineer. He loved God, life, helping those in need, and had nothing but love for the Sentinelese people. As a family, we ask for your understanding and respect for him and us during this time. Thank you, the Chow family. Three months later, John's father criticized religion for the death of his son, stating, if you have anything positive to say about religion, I wish not to see or hear it. John is gone because the Western ideology overpowered my Confucian influence. He blamed evangelicals' extreme Christianity for pushing his child to a not unexpected end, which is a viewpoint often repeated across social Aww. media platforms. John Allen Chow is not a martyr, just a dumb American who thought that tribals needed Jesus when the tribals already lived in harmony with God and nature for years without outside interference. Stupidity cannot be considered to be a martyrdom. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, he took that risk, but you know, I mean, he's, he's a, you can tell he's a sweet, loving guy. And he just wants to share his belief with other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, 
I just wish someone had told him like, hey, don't don't do this. Don't go there. You know, don't just don't go there. You know, but obviously he he probably they, they, they already warned him. He knew he knew that he took that risk. You know, he's a good guy. You know, it's just sad. But like I said, none of y'all better not even try. Because you know it's going to be that one person out there going to be like, well, maybe he didn't do it the right way. I'm going to go and try myself. <laughs> it's going to be that one person out there like, I'm going to try myself. I'm going to try. Wow, it's sad though. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. But anyway, comment below. Let me know how y'all feel about this. And go down there and subscribe to my channel. And I see y'all lovely people. Take care. Peace.